Now don't jump in whatever you do. This horse is one we've been working, started him. When we picked him up down at the ranch he was raised on, they said he hadn't been hauled. Well, we coaxed, I'll use that word, into the trailer and got him here so I could work with him. And now it's time for him to start loading with some kind of dignity. The halters that we use, as you know, everybody knows these halters. Dick McCoy in Pennsylvania ties these, so if you're in that country and you need a good halter, he's the guy to get a hold of. Now this is the same horse I put on the tarp and the flag, and part of the reason was it needed it, and I do that before I teach them to load, because if they'll get on a tarp, then I know they'll get in a trailer. And um, they're a lot gentler by the time you've done the tarp and the flag. He's five years old, so. And the rest of the crew standing here has to be here because the team are a work team. And they got the blinders on. And, and something I'd like to share with you is if you ever see a horse with blinders on, always pay attention because what I have to do is I have to have a horse tied in front of them. I backed up my pickup, pulled forward with the trailer. They had the blinders on and they have to learn to stand quiet. Kim, who owns the team, I know what's going to happen. She's going to go somewhere, tie them up, and some dude's going to walk up and tie their horse right in front of her team. So that's why I did that. And they have to be ready to hear different things behind them and around them. So that's that's why the, the team's here and the white horse is here, just because it needs to be here. Now what I do first, since I've done groundwork, is I drive the horse by the axles. A scared horse will, will jump over the top of me, and a horse that's mad won't move, and a horse that doesn't care will just walk right on by. So I, I drive them by, and this horse, for those of you that have been watching it, know that its deal is, deal meaning its main characteristic, is that anything it doesn't care for, it raises its head. That's what it does. That's how it expresses itself, by raising its head up. Well, that, that's working pretty good for it on the ground right now. But when I ride it, that doesn't work all that well. So we're kind of working on that disappearing. Which, incidentally, I'm not going to go through a three-day clinic to have him drop his head. He will drop his head in time. So now, I can get him to drive by. Left eye, right eye. Pushing on me a little bit in the right eye. I make a note of it. Now when he goes in the trailer, I want him to stay in the front. He's going to stand right up in the front where he belongs. Now if you watch the ears, you'll notice he already knows what to do. My demeanor is to stay as if I am waiting on the bus. I don't really care. He's going to get in and that's a given. I just want him to get in without a big sweaty rack and all the whatever. So he needs to get in. If you watch his body, tail comes up, head goes up. Left hind is positive, right hind is positive. I'm gonna, every time I try to pay him off is by releasing. One of these days when I do this, he's going to drop his skull. Now he's contemplating right there. Now he doesn't need to smell the floor, and he doesn't need to sleep with a blanket, he just needs to get in the trailer. You drive them in because the people that have two horse trailers and it's a safety thing. And if you're by yourself, you try to pull a horse in, you'll be there for a week. Now I go behind the shoulder is where the pressure is. I have to stay behind the shoulder. He knows what to do. You notice my left hand, all it does is give direction. The right hand is the energy. Every time I stop and babble, I'm giving old soup here a chance to think. There's direction. Here's impulsion. That would be wrong. Here's the mistake I would have made if I was a dink. I'm not a dink. You don't back up unless your life is threatened. Now, we're about to get into the drama side of the deal. I, on the other hand, don't care one way or the other. He's going to try out his options. I'm going to pressure him behind the shoulder. He's going to try out his options. Think about it. 
He keeps contemplating pushing on me. That's not a wise choice. He knows exactly what to do. What he's been used to doing is raising his head up there and pushing people around. Now here's a mistake people make. They think they got to straighten the horse out because it's at a 45. I'm going to straighten the horse out by putting pressure on it from this side. Hard to believe. Well, watch. The horse straightens himself out to get in the trailer. There it is. Because that cocking off to one side isn't working real good. Now, just watch the expression of the horse. This is a good horse to work with because he's um, animated, uh, whatever you want to call it. He'll let you know exactly how he's feeling. His mouth is always tight. His head is high. His breathing's up really high. He's worried. He's blowing. He's making a big deal out of this. And the fact is, he already knows exactly what to do. There's no doubt in his mind what to do. He's nervous. I don't. I'm going to call it nerves. There's not a whole lot of fear in this horse. He gets nervous about things he doesn't know real well, and we can, you know, talk about terms, but. What he thinks is that if he, if he has enough drama going, he's not going to have to do this. What I'm doing is just shutting off all the places he's not supposed to be. There's one place here that works out, and that's in this trailer. There's a big try right there. So I'll take a break. I'll watch his feet. I'll see which way they land. I'm not going to wait for his head to come down. I'd die old age. Now the team and the other horse are doing just fine. They need this going on. So when does fear become a habit? Well, this is a habit. I'll let you guess how this horse got here. It was in this trailer. Through everything I'm teaching him, he's got to learn that if I ask, it's going to happen. Pressure. Release. Pressure. Release. Now you notice that flag sitting here on the trailer, and I don't want to use it. I will if I have to, but I just as soon get this done this way. It means more to the horse. More pressure. There again. If I get doing what he's doing, then I'll probably wear myself out. My left hand stays here because of direction. My right hand is below my belt because I don't want to raise the energy unless I raise my hand, which is now. I take the pressure off. Captain Obvious is about to land on his pointed little head. Try it one more time. That won't pay off too good. There is one place here, partner. Now, if he comes flying out, I don't really care. I'm not going to whip him to make him go the rest of the way in. But we're not leaving either. That's a position that when they're standing halfway out, sometimes they and then they'll throw their head up and they'll get hurt. Blocking the skull. I'm going to help him out. Let him know how it works.
That's where he belongs. That's a start. Now what I want to do is get in there and just pet him. Well, he's one of those horses that doesn't really care to be petted, I can tell you that. I'm going to physically put him over where he belongs so he understands. We're in a critical position right here for two reasons. One is I don't want him to throw his head in the air and bang his head. I don't want him smashing me against the trailer. So I keep my elbow against him. My other hand is on the trailer. And I'm going to place him where he needs to be. There, now he's made it. And what we'll do is we'll just unload him and load him. And win, lose, or draw, I don't back a horse out of a trailer. I turn him around because we have stock trailers. I know I have, my horses know how to back up, but especially teaching them like this, I don't want them stepping down that far and getting scared. If I were to teach this horse how to back out of a trailer, I would back the trailer in the ditch and back them right out on flat ground. Then I keep pulling farther away from the ditch. That's how you do it if you need to back them out. Now, he can't get in a big hurry. The object is to, for me to put my hands up, him to turn around, take it easy. I'm blocking his way so he doesn't jump in the middle of my back. I keep my hands raised, I step out of the way, I keep my rope up, and let him out. So now it's a game. There's the breath. It's a done deal. I got him. He just told me I got it. So watch his feet. Watch what he does when I get ready to load him again. Now I'm not ready to load him yet. I'm just about ready to load him. Get out of here. If you have dogs, make sure that you put them away, not like our unruly heathens where they get under the trailer and bite a horse. Now, the dink's over here messing around. That's just part of the deal. Now, I'm going to ask him to load right now. Direction, impulsion. Direction, impulsion. Direction, impulsion. Go on in. Go on in. Go on in. There it is, right there. Now that's where he needs to be. I'm going to let him know he's in the right place. Life is good. Everything's fine. Now in the process of being here with us, he's going to spend time in the trailer. I'll have him saddled. I'm going to go make a circle or go to town or whatever. He'll go to town with us and buy groceries and we'll get him what we call bar broke where they can stand in the trailer for hours and aren't bothered. That's the way I like him to come out right there. Some ranches, not many, but I worked on a ranch where whenever we bought bulls, we'd buy the long yearlings and then we'd put the trailer in the corral and drive the bulls in the trailer from horseback and teach them to load. And after a while, you'd drive them in, you couldn't get them out of the trailer. So, the, the, the point was, was to get them gentle about getting in a trailer so they didn't die of nylon poisoning out in the pasture. That was not my best exit. But the, you were the next time, I think he'll be aware of that and not want to hurry out so bad. Now it's time to load. And he needs to go in the position he's supposed to be in. He knows where to be. I'm pushing on the left eye and I'm driving the horse up where he belongs. Now he's where he belongs. Now we'll think about this dismount. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to half hold him just as he starts out. Right. Another way is to cross. That was a half halt.
Thank you. It's one place in Arizona where you probably ought to be. I'm trying to do it without my lead rope. Need my lead rope, no problem. Lost direction, pressure, release. He knows exactly where to be. He knows exactly where to be now. There's nothing worse than loading three horses and having one bank take up three quarters of the trailer. Now what I gotta do is, is do this enough to where this horse understands that it's no big deal. Just like walking up to the feed bunk. There's that injury spot right there. It's all a matter of really good timing when you're working with a horse coming out of a trailer. If you start to watch this horse, you're going to watch him. He's going to want to be in the trailer. I'm going to have to get out of his way so he can get in the trailer. That's where I want him. Now I'm going to tell him to go ahead and go around. Watch the ears. This isn't just a parlor trick. This is the idea that a horse, there's no doubt in his mind where to be. You can load him from as long as your lariat is if you want to. The point is, is for the horse to have the confidence to get in the trailer without any duress. Hesitation. I want him to think. That time I put my hand out to slow him down. Now I'll see if he's got it. Now you can make this as big a wreck as you want to, but it, it's pretty simple once you've done your homework. The homework on this horse being the tarp and the flag. You can appreciate why I don't want to use the flag. It's because I don't want to use the flag. I don't have I don't want to have to go that extra energy I just want to do it as low-key as I possibly can and the less deal I make out of it the less deal He's gonna make out of it today Now horses that are soured from loading You get about as creative as, it, as you need to but this horse isn't sour to be loaded He just didn't know how to load He grew up on the ranch and never got to town so, you know, understand what you're dealing with. And if you got a sour horse, there again, you can back up against a bank and make it safer yet for him to put the back of the trailer right next to the ground. I want him to just walk out of the trailer. <sighs> Pressure. Now watch the feet. Positive, the head's positive, head's lower now, there's no doubt in his mind what to do. I'm going to get out of the way so he can get in the trailer. Pressure, up to the front, don't look back, up to the front, up to the front. Every single time you got to know that you go to the front of the trailer and you stay there until I tell you not to. Now we're going to work on this horse staying. I don't want to tie him and scare him, I just want him to stay. This is where everybody gets hurt in this trailer deal is when you're inside the trailer. Thank you.
Pressure. Pressure. And see, I can watch a shadow right on the ground. You don't have to constantly stare at a horse. You can pretty much see what they're doing. Now I'm going to act like I own him. Oh, by the way, you need to get in. The idea of this is not just a game. Like I said, the idea is for this horse to understand and there's no hesitation. When I mention load, when I think load, you get in. That's all there is to it. It's not negotiable. This time it's the right eye. Now I feel comfortable here now where I didn't before. I'm not going to let you in right now. I don't really want you in. I don't want you in. Now you can go ahead and get in. There's your buddies over there, but you really need to get in the trailer. Same place every single time, horse. That was good. You stay right there is what I'm trying to tell this horse. You're fine. You don't want any jerk, uh, jerky fast moves when you're dealing with a horse in a trailer. Or you're unloading three. You want it. It's a big deal. There's a lot of guys get hurt doing this stuff. Everybody's in a big hurry. You're trying to get, you're late, get going where you're going, whatever. Things happen too quick, somebody gets hurt. I've seen more cowboys hurt in corrals and in closed areas and killed than I've ever seen out on the flats. And it's usually because they're in too big a hurry. Now, just because they're even in a horse out, I'm going to load from the other side. Now, it's counterproductive to what I want to get done because the horse turns the wrong way. But the point is, is that they're good in either eye. This is an angle trailer, three horse slant, so they need to stand over here. There. Now, the leading the horse in. I'm done driving the horse in. I can see a shadow right there. The more you look at a horse, the longer it takes you to get anything done. Because for a horse, it's like a confrontation, whether it's meant to be or not. But when you stare at them, they usually just stop and look at you. So now I'm just going to turn around and go load the horse. I just thread my rope, walk to the back, tell him to move up where he belongs, and drop the rope. And that's where he's supposed to be. So driving a horse in when you're schooling is a lot smarter than leading them in to train them. Because it's a good way to get hurt. Once they understand that you can do whatever you want. Now he's getting out really nice. When he jumped out that time, I got to tell you, it actually scared him. So I don't, he doesn't really want to jump out. Now I'm not going to stop, turn around and look at him and ask him to get in. That's the biggest mistake ever made leading a horse in a trailer. You get up to the trailer, then you stop and turn around and look at him. 
and they stop. Now you're dead in the water. So there's a lot about presence, a lot about your anxiety, a lot about breathing. Um, Five-year-old horse. Questions? It's been 25 minutes. It's been 25 minutes. It's amazing. You guys good? I'm impressed. Well then, Barb's impressed, so we'll stop now. Thank you. <laughs>